WikiLeaks publicizes Vault 7, 8,000 plus pages of CIA documents. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for March 14, 2017, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. First off, a special thanks to our patrons for supporting the show every single month. If you want access to extras, hit up patreon.com slash threatwire for more information. This week is going to be a little different than our usual show. Instead of reporting on three to four stories like we usually do, I'm going to be reporting on just one, and it's the Vault 7 WikiLeaks CIA leak. This is a huge story, and rightfully so. It's very similar to the coverage uh, that the public read about during Snowden's NSA leaks a few years ago, which just so happened to happen just a bit after we started doing ThreatWire. And it could have similar implications too when it comes to security and privacy, and has already surpassed the amount of documentation released by Snowden. According to WikiLeaks, this is the largest publication of confidential CIA documents ever, and it's from a high security CIA network in Langley, Virginia. Now while Snowden's documents covered NSA surveillance of a wide audience, the CIA documents pertain to development of said tools, but do not disclose any proof of real life hacks. Keep that in mind. So onto the story. On Tuesday, March 7th, WikiLeaks published several different documents in an ongoing series that they dubbed Vault 7 from the Central Intelligence Agency in the US. They are starting with over 8,000 documents codenamed Year Zero with more to come. According to WikiLeaks press release, Year Zero documents describe several hacking tools that the CIA uses, along with interception of Samsung TV microphones and weaponized exploits on popular brands of smartphone operators systems, including Android, iOS, and of course you have Windows in there too. The documents are all dated between 2013 and 2016, so there's a three-year wide gap in there. According to WikiLeaks, the CIA tools are built by Engineering Development Group, which is EDG for short, within the Center for Cyber Intelligence, which is CCI, which is a department in the CIA. Tools built by EDG include Weeping Angel, iOS Zero Days, as well as Android Zero Days, which are used worldwide for surveillance. Included in the PR analysis is a quote from WikiLeaks, quote, These techniques permit the CIA to bypass the encryption of WhatsApp, Signal, Telegram, Weibo, Confide, and Cloakman by hacking the smartphones that they run on and collecting audio and message traffic before encryption is applied. This quote spurred a heated debate on Twitter between InfoSec professionals and the media due to misinformation about secure messaging protocols being bypassed. Since the point of these apps is to encrypt telecommunications through the transfer between two contacts, which is why it's called end-to-end -end encryption, it wouldn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the CIA could invariably hack your phone and steal data just by looking at the screen before the app itself begins the process of encryption and transmission. This does not mean that you should not be using a secure messaging protocol. It just means that you should use due diligence whenever downloading things onto your phone, not use public networks, and I don't no, for example, don't give your phone to the CIA for starters. The docs do include large lists of Android and iOS exploits used to gain root or system privileges on a target device, along with what devices the exploits work on. One previously mentioned in this episode was called Weeping Angel, which personally I love because I'm a Doctor Who fan, which is an exploit used against smart TVs to turn on the microphone and record audio without a user noticing. To work, malware must be installed on the TV and the documents mentioned via USB, but it is kind of unclear if that would work remotely as well or if it's just installed via USB, so somebody would have to like physically come in and do it. The malware would make the TV go into a fake off mode, which turns off LEDs and the screen, making the user think the TV is off. While in this mode, the TV's microphone would turn on and record audio. Since the development notes still have a to-do future work section, it's also unclear if this has ever actually been used in the wild or even finished. The analysis also discloses the CIA's hoarding of vulnerabilities Vulnerabilities, in which they secretly keep vulnerabilities to themselves and never tell the brand which are affected. This can keep the public at risk of infection by anyone else who might just so happen to find the same vulnerability. By not telling the tech company involved, be it Apple, Google, Microsoft, or whoever it might be, they can't fix it. And if other state-sponsored hackers have found these same vulnerabilities and have been taking advantage of them against 
against anyone, then that would have been an extremely negative aspect of keeping these Volns secret. WikiLeaks continues with information pertaining to a covert operational base at the Frankfurt U.S. Consulate for the CIA, where hackers are able to travel freely to 25 different countries from, and they describe the CIA's ability to evade many consumer antivirus tools, many of which are extremely popular. An entire section is dedicated to personal security products and how to get around their detection. The CIA has documents about Avira, AVG, Komodo, and Bitdefender, just to name a few. Another section is for evaluating USB penetration testing tools such as Bad USB and the USB rubber ducky, <coughs> which I may have heard of before. It seems as if the CIA is attempting to create their own USB exploits by taking code and hardware components of current devices and rebuilding them for their specific use case scenario. Surprisingly, all of this information from the CIA is unclassified, so CIA officers can't be prosecuted for publicizing the docs online, and folks can pirate it as much as they want for free. None of the documents include code for actually implementing malware or scripts for actual hacks. So it seems like most of the data is conversationalist in essence, and it reads like a dictionary of terms for most of it the CIA uses for their hacking tools. While reading through some of the documents, my mind wasn't necessarily blown away by much of anything that was released. We have seen malware several times in the past for Android, a few for iOS, and tons for Windows. We have known about USB hacks, and we even built one ourselves, and of course, Internet of Things devices are a convenience over security choice that consumers make. And if there's a microphone on a smart TV, it could potentially be used for evil. But all these tools that the CIA has been using, they seem to be targeting specific actors not used for widespread public surveillance, such as the NSA docs showed us. Of course, you should use any means necessary and available to you to protect your own data and privacy, but are you being targeted? targeted by the CIA? Most likely not. Currently, it's unclear who's released the documents, though WikiLeaks says it could have been a hacker or a government contractor. We don't know for sure if it was an operative inside the CIA or somebody who gained access from outside the secure network. In a quick news release from Reuters, law enforcement and U.S. intelligence officials stated the CIA has been aware of a breach since late last year, and they are focusing on contractors as the likeliest source. Two days after the release, Julian Assange, who is the editor-in-chief and creator of WikiLeaks, gave a public statement via the WikiLeaks Facebook page. He chose to proceed by working with manufacturers by giving them exclusive access to the technical details that WikiLeaks has regarding the CIA zero-day exploits so that manufacturers can fix any vulnerabilities that are still out there. In responses to CNET, Google, Microsoft, and Apple all stated that their newest versions of software fixed any kind of security vulnerabilities that were disclosed in the Vault 7 leak. The CIA ended up making a public statement via their website as well about the WikiLeaks Vault 7 documents, saying, quote, we have no comment on the authenticity of purported intelligence documents released by WikiLeaks or on the status of any investigation into the source of the documents. However, there are several critical points we would like to make. And they go on, the American public should be deeply troubled by any WikiLeaks disclosure designed to damage the intelligence community's ability to protect America against terrorists and other adversaries. Such disclosures not only jeopardize U.S. personnel and operations, but also equip our adversaries with tools and information to do us harm. The full quote is available in the show notes beneath this episode. On a positive note though, some of the agency employees are definitely human beings. They use memes to troll each other just like we do to our friends on Twitter and Facebook, and they use Pokemon names for some of their code names, which isn't super creative, but is definitely cute. So is this whole story good or bad? Well, first off, we don't have confirmation if it's true, just WikiLeaks word to go by, but 8,000 plus documents? I mean, that would be a really big amount for anybody to falsify, let alone take the time and money to do it, especially when some products have already been proven as real tools. So while good and bad is a very relative term, it does create a conversation of meaning. Does leaking information from governments create dangerous situations? or does it further the security of the masses, or both? Should governments be allowed to do tool development like this in secret, or should vulnerabilities be disclosed? I would like to know your thoughts on that in the comments below, and we will continue to follow this story as more documents are released. Whew. 
Okay, I realize that was a lot of information to get through, but I tried to cover as much as I could under like seven minutes. Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everybody who has supported the show so far on Patreon. If you find value from this and you can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash threatwire. We may even feature your adorable fur babies, just like these ones. We have a new one this week. Super excited about that. Plus, you will get access to behind the scenes videos, an audio only feed, and tons of extra content. I hope you'll contribute to help this show continue being completely independent and ad free. And of course, if you cannot donate, you can like, share, and subscribe. All of those go a long way too, especially if you hit that little subscribe button down there. If you just ran by this episode on YouTube, definitely hit that. And you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Shannon Morris. I'm going to go play some Pokemon Go. I will see you on the internet. <gasps> There's an onyx. I got to go.